Well, March turned out to be pretty all right, didn't it? But before we get into all of the stats, I want to explain a little bit about uh, some caveats regarding this month's data. Because we've now got these new uh, South arrays that you'll probably be aware of if you've been watching the channel recently, uh, go check out some of the videos uh, over the last month or so about that. Um, it's somewhat messed up the give energy data, I'm afraid. Um, so everything that I'm going to say in this video, you've got to take with a little bit of a pinch of salt because uh, I'm not entirely convinced that the give energy data is accurate anymore. Uh, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, basically uh, the situation is that um, because of the extra generation that we're now uh, adding to the house from the two new arrays, the give energy system kind of doesn't really see that as generation. It sees it as a reduction in demand. Now, the problem is that on some days we're actually generating more from those uh, new south arrays than we actually consume in the house anyway. So the demand goes to zero as far as the give energy system is concerned, but then there's extra generation on top of that, which then goes out to the grid. Uh, so it's all a bit confusing, um, but yeah, let me show you briefly what I'm talking about. So this is a good example day from March. This is the 18th, which was particularly sunny. Um, and you can actually see from the, uh, the, the generation curve there, the, the yellow line, um, we have this lovely sort of uh, strange peak uh, curve shape um, that I call the fondant fancy curve because uh, it looks a little bit like a, a fondant fancy sliced through through the middle um, and that's um, basically uninterrupted sunshine for the whole day. Now uh, let me draw your attention to the uh, the green line here this one that's sort of bumbling up and down here. This is the uh, the demand curve and this is um, obviously us uh, running the heating a little bit overnight um, just to pre-warm the house and I think this little bit here is us running um, a towel rail and the hot water is also running at this time as well so the demand is high overnight and all, most of that's coming from the grid while the battery um, charges up. However you'll see as the uh, the sun starts to come up um, the generation drops down and at this point uh, the uh, sorry the demand drops down and at this point um, you can see that the demand has dropped to zero you can see their load power zero and it stays at zero for the rest of the day so um, that green line is at zero which means as far as the give energy is concerned uh, we are not using any power at all in the house and the reason for that is the new arrays are adding power to the AC part of the house which means that uh, that is offsetting any demands that we um, require and then the give energy system just sees that as zero demand. Now of course uh, we're actually generating more than uh, what we're consuming so therefore you can see here this red bit above the yellow line is additional grid export over and above what the give energy system is generating. Now that's the extra uh, generation from the new south arrays um, having had our home demand subtracted from it. So you can see there at this point here we are um, exporting about five kilowatts. The given energy system is generating just about three and a half kilowatts um, but the two new arrays will be generating something in the region of 2.2 kilowatts which means that um, a couple of hundred uh, watts is actually going into the house and everything else is getting exported and that's why you see this uh, the red line above the yellow line which you wouldn't normally see if give energy was the only system that we'd actually got operating in the house. Um, and then of course you can see that um, later in the evening I force export the battery down um, a little bit so that it uh, we, we gain a little bit extra revenue from um, using the, uh, the force export function there and selling the um, excess power that we've got stored in that battery out at uh, 15 pence a kilowatt hour um, as we're currently getting from the uh, octopus export rate. Um, but yeah you can see then that obviously any consumption data that we get from the given energy system is going to be all out of whack um, and uh, so what I would normally do is use the give energy system to help me uh, prepare these charts that I'm going to show um, but uh, yeah for the purposes of this month's data I've had to make some adjustments um, so what I've had to do uh, is is sort of fudge it a little bit and uh, kind of assume that the give energy system sees the extra generation from the south arrays as negative uh, demand uh, and add that on to what uh, the Give Energy system says that we actually consumed and that hopefully gives us what we did actually consume. Um, so it seems to be about right. So I'm, I'm not 100% convinced I've got it right, but it looks about right compared to what we um, normally see uh, you know, on a, on a monthly basis. So I think I've done a reasonable job compensating for it. Now there is a way 
of apparently uh, allowing give energy inverters to see additional generation input at least for I believe the Gen 2 and Gen 3 hybrid inverters it's possible to add additional um, data feeds into the inverter using CT clamps around any extra uh, generation you've got. Uh, so I'm looking into doing that which will hopefully fix the problem. Um, I'm going to do a whole separate video about that rather than explaining any more about it here. Um, so look out for that one uh, in due course. I haven't uh, actually gone about got around to doing anything about it yet um, but hopefully I will uh, at some point over the next couple of months and at that point I'll explain all of the things that I've done uh, and hopefully that will fix this data problem. Uh, I kind of knew that this was going to happen. I, I anticipated that it would cause some issues with the data. I was reasonably confident I'd be able to compensate for it um, and I think I've done a reasonable job but uh, yeah let me show you the rest of the data and uh, you can judge for yourself to see whether or not uh, what I've done is looks reasonable. And of course, because I've got these two new arrays, I've had to completely change the way I show the data in these charts because um, it was going to get really confusing and messy uh, the way I was doing it before, where I was overlaying um, the different years on the same chart. So what I've decided to do was split it out into um, the full sequence of months. Um, and I've show I'm showing two years of data at the moment. I, um, I'm unsure whether to show any more um, because I technically have a whole other year's worth of data prior to this. Um, but for now, I'm going to stick with sort of the previous year and the current year to see how that goes. So you can see this is all of the previous year's um, generation from just the Give Energy system. Um, and uh, I've added on the, uh, the expected level uh, in that blue shaded area. That's from the PVGIS system. And then what I've done from uh, March onwards over on the, the current year, 2025, I've added in the expected generation from the two new south arrays. Um, so this is now the combined um, expected output for both the Give Energy and the two new south arrays. Um, and uh, so you can see I've added also on the, the two new uh, uh, south arrays on top of the um, Give Energy generation bar here so that we've got a stacked bar chart so that uh, you can see that actually the combined total was well above what we would expect for March as I'm sure many of you have experienced already March was exceptionally good um, and uh, April is looking even better so yeah it'll be really interesting to see what happens next month um, but uh, the one thing I couldn't do in this chart was show the totals on the top However, I did find an alternative way um, of uh, displaying this data so uh, let me flip over to that now and uh, see what you think. So this is the alternative view of that data and you can see that we've lost the plus and minus one standard deviation lines which show the variation that you could get for a given month between one year and the next for example. But we have gained this uh, additional total uh, value here for the, um, the combined stack of generation. So um, the total is 813 kilowatt hours for March and you can see that's made up of 515 kilowatt hours from the Give Energy system, 145 from the Fox ESS system and 153 from the uh, N phase system. Those are the two new South arrays. So uh, yeah, that's the options basically. You, you can either have the totals uh, on the stack or you can have the plus or minus one standard deviation lines. That's just a limitation in the G sheets um, that I'm using to prepare these charts. Um, it's just one of those things I, I've tried my, uh, to get around it, but um, I can't seem to find a, a good solution. So yeah, those are your two options. I think this, this one is probably ultimately more useful um, because I think the totals are probably a little bit more useful than the, than the plus or minus one st standard deviation lines. But let me know what you think. Um, so yeah, let me flip, flip backwards and forwards a, a little bit so you can see um, you've either got this version or this version. Uh, so yeah, I will go with a consensus, whichever you think is uh, more useful or appropriate. Um, yeah, let me know and uh, I will go with that for future months. And because we've added these two new south arrays to our existing east-west array, uh, I thought it was probably worth adding this new chart through popular request. Uh, this is the kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak for the three different systems that we've now got. So the Give Energy uh, system has a, a peak output of uh, 6.84 kilowatts. So that's the combined output of the two um, east and west arrays combined. Uh, and then we've got the Fox ESS um, array and the Enphase uh, array and these are both three panels of 460 watts each and that gives a peak output of 1.38 kilowatts um, but you can see that uh, over the uh, course of last year the Give Energy system peaked at 117.5 uh, kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak and it dropped as far down as 10 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak in December. It's starting to climb again now and we're up to 75 
kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak for um, the Give Energy system. And the two south arrays are much higher now, 104 and 110 uh, or, uh, respectively for the um, Fox and Enve systems. So you can see that's the difference between uh, east, west and south. And as we go through the rest of this year, uh, it'll be interesting to see how those compare. I, I expect the south arrays will um, stay somewhat higher than the Give Energy system. And in fact, over the winter, I think they'll um, they'll beat the Give Energy system soundly um, because they're, they're going to be that much better at capturing that, uh, that uh, um, low uh, winter sun. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes over the next um, few months. And this um, chart will make a return uh, for future months. And it looks like this is probably the last month I'll be showing the heating demand. And you see in March, we actually used four, 240 kilowatt hours, down a little bit actually from last year, despite the fact that we are now doing this overnight heating um, uh, as I've uh, been doing all winter uh, and typically been using a little bit more than, than last year. You can see every month up until now, we've been using more than we did last year. And that was to be expected. I was completely um, uh, expecting that. Um, but uh, yeah, for March, actually, it was a bit lower, um, primarily due to the fact that I think it's been uh, unseasonably warm in March and a little bit sunnier. So we've gained a little bit from that, uh, that solar gain. I've now got enough data that I've been able to rebuild this uh, expected heating demand model. Um, I'm going to have a whole separate video about that. It's going to be extremely nerdy. Uh, so yeah, um, bear that in mind should you decide to watch that video. Um, lots of uh, statistical analysis and all that stuff. Um, it's, uh, I'm sure, very interesting to a certain segment of my viewership. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect everybody to watch it. That's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, just uh, understand that um, that's where this blue shaded area comes from. And that, again, the plus minus one standard deviation lines there show the variation that we would expect. The green lines are no longer um, relevant to this particular blue shaded area. So um, it's now a case of uh, comparing the orange against that blue just to see where, where we were in terms of what we would expect on a typical year um, to require as far as heating is concerned. And you can see for the majority of the time we were at or below uh, the last couple of months. Um, well, certainly in January, we used significantly more than we would expect. February was about the same and March significantly less. And so far in April, we've not needed the heating at all. So uh, yeah, very interesting. I doubt we're going to need any more heating for the rest of April. It's been uh, unseasonably warm, um, as I mentioned. And uh, yeah, so that's probably the last time I will uh, mention the, uh, the heating in uh, this particular particular stats video uh, for the rest of the summer until probably October or November time. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will be going through the derivation of this new heating model uh, in a future video for those who are super interested in all that nerdy stuff. So yeah, look out for that one. And this is how the rest of the home consumption breaks down. Uh, you can see that the um, heating, our air to air heat pump system took 240 kilowatt hours for March and the hot water, which is our mix G IHP uh, integrated heat pump cylinder took 58.58 kilowatt hours. The EV only 46.61 kilowatt hours this month, which is only about half of what it often is, and um, which is unusual, but uh, there you go. That's uh, the way these things work out sometimes. The tower rails pretty similar again, um, 12 kilowatt hours roughly, um, very similar to the last few months. We didn't use the dehumidifiers again this month. So that's basically three months on the trot when we didn't use the dehumidifiers at all. I'm not sure what uh, changed uh, this year compared to last year but it seems like we've not really needed them as much basically since uh, December um, but uh, yeah what one of those weird things I guess so this is the value down here that I'm a little bit unsure about uh, the remainder the sort of typical house usage so that's everything from you know TVs and ovens and toasters and kettles and all that stuff um, this is the bit that I'm unsure about I've had to uh, derive this um, from the give energy data plus the new generation from the new arrays and fudge it a little bit and till it until it looked about right i think it's about right it looks plausible given um you know the values for previous months so i think it's going to be in the right ballpark anyway let's let's put it that way so it's not going to be too far off um but you can see that the total that we consumed in the house was about 650 kilowatt hours uh, for March, about 100 and a bit uh, less than uh, than last March. And I think that's primarily due to the fact that we used a little bit less heating and uh, way less hot water because we've now got the Bixergy IHP cylinder, whereas last year we still had the immersion heater in the, in the cylinder that we were using to heat our, our hot water. And um, we've used about half the amount of EV that, that compared to the same year, same month last year, and we haven't used the dehumidifiers at all. So um, yeah, those are the main differences, um, but it's looking like um, the heating is going to be zero from here on out. Um, so yeah, looking forward to showing you next month's data.
And this is probably the last month that I'll be showing this particular chart, at least until uh, winter starts again uh, later in the year. Um, this is the peak and off-peak import of, uh, of power into the house. And you can see that basically in March, um, we've essentially not really imported any peak uh, electricity at all. Uh, everything that's been pulled into the house from the grid has been at off-peak rates um, overnight during the, uh, the cheap Optimus Go period and um, you can see that the yellow there is the is the peak and the blue is the off peak um, now if I show you uh, this chart um, this is uh, last year compared to this year uh, for just the the peak uh, import and you can see last year we um, imported a total of 559 kilowatt hours between um, the start of October and the end of March and this year we've imported 414 kilowatt hours um, from the beginning of October to the end of March and I think um, this is almost certainly down to the fact that we're uh, doing this overnight heating um, during the winter with uh, preheating the house um, using off-peak power, which means that our battery lasts that much longer through the day. And it means that we need less uh, peak power to uh, maintain that uh, the heating into the rest of the evening. Um, the majority of the time we're coping quite nicely with the battery capacity that we've got. Obviously, when we had a cold snap, uh, we would get um, we would run out of battery and we would have to pull from the grid during the day so that would count as, as peak import um, but yeah overall um, a pretty hefty reduction and that has actually meant that um, we've uh, saved quite a bit of extra money even though we've consumed somewhat more in terms of heating um, I think that was a reasonable compromise um, but yeah let's uh, move on to the money. So the first thing I want to show you very quickly is this rolling annual bill that I've been uh, calculating recently and you can see that uh, the bill has been dropping significantly since we've added the two new south arrays and it's dropped from £273.69 last month down to £180.55 this month. So this is, uh, when I say rolling annual bill, I mean the sum of the uh, actual bill from Octopus over the previous um, 12 months. So the, the previous 12 months including that data point there. So uh, this month obviously we've um, been benefiting from those two new south arrays which means the annual bill has dropped uh, significantly from last month and uh, we've uh, actually gained about 100 pounds it'll be really interesting to see where this ends up obviously it's going to keep dropping down as um, more of the um, the data from previous months drops off of the end and we gain additional months um, with those two new south arrays contributing towards the uh, towards the uh, consumption and uh, uh, export from the house and uh, yeah so it'll be interesting to see where will that end up will it end up zero or will it end up negative I'm my hypothesis is that it should be roughly zero but actually looking at the way this is going it might well end up negative um, but we've had a couple of exceptional months already so uh, we will see where we end up after a full year's worth of data and showing the individual months for the last year or so you can see that last March our, an, our actual bill from Octopus was £54.21 pence, whereas uh, this March it is minus £38.93 um, and that is almost entirely down to the fact that um, we've got these two new arrays which were installed just in time for an absolutely cracking uh, solar month uh, in March and you can see that that gave us a sa total savings this month of about £216 uh, compared to what it would have been um, if we hadn't had the solar and battery system, um, if we didn't have Cats EV, um, and if we um, were heating with gas and doing the hot water with gas and all that other stuff, it, the, I estimate the bill would have been about £177.80, um, whereas in fact it was minus £38.93, so that gave us a total saving of £216.72 uh, for March, which is uh, actually the highest it's been yep that's the highest it's been for uh, over a year so that's great to see i'm pretty sure it's going to be up at this level for the rest of the year as well because of those two new arrays so that's it from me for this month quite a few changes compared to the previous months what with the new arrays and everything and the uh, the weird data issues that i'm having to uh, work around hopefully i'll get all of those resolved in the future and i'll let you know how i go about doing all of that um but yeah it's super exciting times um very happy with the new arrays and looking forward to um, share it, showing more of those off uh, in future videos. But that's it for now. Uh, if you want to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I've also got channel memberships open now, so go and check out uh, the link in the description if you'd like to uh, join the channel and get these videos a few days early. Um, it's only 99p a month, um, so you know, if you think it's worthwhile seeing these videos a little bit early, then uh, yeah, go and either click the join button that you'll see on the front page or find the link in the video description, and uh, I certainly would appreciate having you along. That's it though. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.